Did you know that banks can quite literally print money? They can create it out of thin air. Well, I guess most people didn't know that until the 2008 credit crisis when the banks began printing money like there was no tomorrow. Well, in response to this rather odd situation, a group of hackers and nerds got together to say, can we create a credible alternative to centralized currency? So Sam took a look at the fascinating world of Bitcoin. First up, an apology. In our recent video about the Silk Road, we said Bitcoin was a digital currency that was developed for computer games. That wasn't quite accurate. The truth, however, is far more interesting, so we thought we'd take a look at one of the most important currencies you've probably never heard of. Traditionally, money is created by central banks working under licence from governments. Between the governments and the banks, they issue money and try to control its value by deciding how much to pump into the economy and what it's worth by setting minimum wages, minimum prices and the like. Bitcoins are different, developed as a form of global exchange without banks and regulated by public demand, not the market. They're created as a direct payment when a user's computer completes the complicated mathematical task of verifying other people's transactions. If you complete a block of work before anyone else, the system makes some bitcoins and gives them to you. Around 50 are created every 10 minutes in a process called mining. To stop people building super powerful $60,000 computers like these and becoming filthy rich, every time a threshold of the number of bitcoins that exist is passed, the system starts to issue less coins. So instead of 50, you'll get 25. And that new computer will have to work twice as hard. But what can you spend bitcoins on? Well, you spend them on stuff. Nice stuff that you like. Like food and computers. Bitcoins and their subunits BitSense and Satoshis, after the guy who invented the system, can be used to buy everything a dollar would buy, using over a thousand online retailers who accept them. Or you can sell them to someone else in exchange for cash which you can then spend offline. Bitcoins are also pretty much anonymous. Once you've bought them, your transactions become hard to trace, as they simply pass from one account to another through a string of thousands of computers verifying each transaction. That's great for anonymity and privacy advocates, but it also heralds a problem. Theft. Hack someone's computer, steal their password, nip in, transfer the coins, and because it's all anonymous, the chances are you'll never know who done it, even if you can track down where the coins were transferred to. In the largest hack, thieves tried to escape with over $8 million from the MT Gox exchange, crushing the currency's value in seconds and costing many trading in it, even those who weren't hacked a fortune in bad exchange rates, although it was great news for those wanting to buy into the system. There's also a sort of problem with inflation. In the real world, currency becomes less valuable. A house which was $500 in the 1950s could be worth $100,000 today. Bitcoin worked in reverse to try and keep the market stable and ensure no one generates too many new coins. The first ever Bitcoin purchase was two pizzas, and that cost 10,000 Bitcoins. In fact, a limit has been set at 21 million total. So as less and less Bitcoins are created, each one becomes potentially more valuable. They're worth some 10 real world dollars at the moment. So the people who started out when Bitcoins were easy to get and saved hard are now millionaires. Whereas people who are just getting involved don't get as good a rate and may be forced to drop out of the system. So, Bitcoins. An interesting idea, a currency that's simply worth what people will pay for it, that can be used anywhere and is free from market regulation. However, that leaves it free to swing wildly in value depending on how many websites accept it as a currency and as a result of fraud. So, should you invest in bitcoins? Sure, but maybe not your life savings. But it's up to you. What do you think? Is national currency as we know it set to die out, or will the future still be paper in your pocket? Should banks just be able to print currency out of thin air? Should they be able to create wealth? It does seem a rather odd situation, and if you do believe it to be strange, are bitcoins the solution? Let us know your thoughts in a comment, and as ever, hit that subscribe button and you won't miss out on great videos like this. We'll see you again next time.